Yo yo and greetings! Welcome to Quercus Tribe TV, the very first episode on this channel. My name is Villas, and this channel is going to be about discovering and sharing ways to reconnect to the natural world in the physical realms and the spiritual realms. And I'm truly excited to start this channel, and I've wanted to do it for a long time because. I'm on a personal journey to deepen my relationship to nature and have found a lot of ways to find some more purpose to outdoor activities and um, I really want to share some of them with you guys and also encourage people watching to share some of their adventures, what brings you closer to nature and um, you could either write some comments or send me an email with a, a little video clip from your local landscapes to get some inputs from different people, different landscapes, and really trying to create community where we can grow together into a more symbiotic relationship to nature. So um, that's the purpose of this channel. And uh, I'm pretty new to this thing, to filming, editing, speaking to a camera, and <coughs> articulating myself in English, which is not my native language. So uh, please have compassion on me if it's not too beautiful and professional to begin with. But just you wait, it will be. And um, I hope you're gonna stick with me because it's gonna be a lot of fun. I have a lot of uh, nice topics to cover. And um, that's it, man. Let's get started. So let me start by introducing myself and make just a brief explanation of my journey and why I live the way that I do. So what better place to start than here, my homemade little refuge, the countryside, on the land of my parents and a house that I made to live a bit closer to the natural world. Let's go in. So, quite honestly, I was never a fan of the education system and I always felt a bit like a prisoner in the schooling system and then later on I tried to force myself through an education and I went through a pretty dark time where I, I kind of felt sick and I was mentally preparing myself to die. So. Um, in the end, I was really grateful for this time because when I came out on the other side, I came with a, a new kind of curiosity and uh, excitement to uh, learn and, and really a, a will and a hunger for uh, knowledge and personal development. So um, I really decided to enjoy life as much as possible because it's right now it's happening. And uh, I took the decision to make my own education in a way where I would travel for five years uh, and stay abroad from uh, Denmark where I lived uh, in the winter time and then come back here in the summer and earn a bit of money to make that travel possible. And then um, in between that travel, I made this house as a place to really develop my relationship to nature and spend a lot of time to cultivate vegetables and being with nature and learning from the landscape and on my travels I got to meet a lot of indigenous peoples from around the world and uh, meeting those people and also reading a lot about the history of mankind made me realize how important this relationship to nature really is for our health and our uh, spiritual development and for so many things and what we have lost in the creation of society which has obviously had a lot of uh, good things to it as well but uh, i really felt this urge to strengthen my relationship to the natural world and uh, that made me determined to become a humble student of the greatest master ever imaginable mother nature itself So, 
welcome to the almighty Quercus. Quercus is the Latin name for the oak tree, the oak family of trees. And uh, oak used to be a very important tree for our ancestors and uh, many of the peoples that lived in regions where they had the p trees of the oak family because you could harvest the acorn every year and you can make a flower from the acorn that you can store to sustain yourself throughout the whole year. So before we had the wheat, before the agricultural revolution, the acorn was really important for a lot of people. And uh, that's really the inspiration for the name Quercus tribe, because it's kind of a symbol of the uh, living ways before the agricultural revolution, uh, the more wild way to live in the, uh, and coexist with the land, not trying to reshape the landscape to meet our needs, but try to fit into the existing landscape. So I really love the oak tree, especially when they get to become really old like these ones. They're probably uh, 800 years, I believe so. So uh, I feel very humble in the presence of these trees. Yeah. So in this first episode on this channel, I find it really appropriate to share one of the ways that I am truly becoming part of the landscape in the most literal sense by consuming it and building myself out of the local landscape. And I'm doing that with acorn and kind of trying to replace my desire and habits of eating weeds and uh, bread um, because uh, that can only be sustained from monoculture uh, to harvest sufficient of that and um, we tend to tolerate acorn a lot better there's a lot of health benefits to acorn there is no gluten in it like, like there is in the wheat and um, they also contain a lot of uh, essential minerals and vitamins uh, it's very different from uh, the different species, how much they contain, since there is more than 450 different species worldwide of acorn. Uh, but they all contain uh, a high amount of iron and potassium and vitamin A and E. And the uh, scientists have also found that they contain more than 60 beneficial plant compounds that acts as uh, antioxidants and help to repair the cells. Um, but they do contain uh, tannins, which is essentially an anti-nutrient that prevents the body from obtaining nutrients from other foods as well. So it's really important to get that out of them. And I've heard that indigenous peoples back in the days used to uh, kind of crack them open and leave them in a pond somewhere in a river and they could just return a month later and they would be ready for consumption. Unfortunately, I haven't found a place where I can do that, uh, even though that would be much easier than what I do right now. But um, I find that the process of making acorn eatable is very fulfilling. Uh, I really enjoy to go out to the park in the fall and collect the acorns with my basket here beneath the huge old oak trees. And I find that the whole uh, process of making them eatable is very nice uh, community activity that you can really involve the kids and the elders in. And um, let me share how I do it. So the first thing that needs to be done when you have the acorn is to dry them so they can be stored and they don't turn bad. And uh, this one is from, from last year. When they're dry, they're much easier to crack open. And I used to sit there with a stone and crack them open one by one, which is a lot of work. So I think I found a better method to fill them up in the back here and beat the shit out of them. All right, I think that did the job. Let's see. Yeah, nice and uh, broken all the shells and now I just need to kind of separate the acorn from the shell here.
so I got this uh, manual grinder, which is an amazing tool for a lot of foods, but especially for acorn, since they're really, really tough to grind into flour. So I'm gonna fill them up here. Then I just start grinding them. So now they've been grinded and there's still quite some big chunks in there. So always run it through at least three times to make it a bit more fine grain. So now when we have the flour, we just fill it up in a glass jar and we don't want to fill it more than um, I would say uh, one third because it's gonna expand a little bit and we want we want it to be like half water and half acorn when we store it for um, leaching out the anti-nutrients. And now we just wanna fill it up with water to soak it, make it wet. So now I have the jaw ready to be left in the fridge or even outdoors if it's cold enough. We don't want it to stand too hot because then it's going to ferment and that's not a good idea for the acorn flour. But uh, I'm going to leave it in a cold place and change the water about two times a day. For uh, with this kind of acorn it's going to take about two weeks. So uh, we need to have some patience there. But I did make one earlier like every a uh, television kitchen and uh, this one is almost ready it has a bit of brown color still and uh, if i open it up and take a little uh, a little taste sip here still have a bit of bitter in it uh, but not much so i would guess in two days uh, this one is going to be ready to eat and i'm going to dry the flour to store it and I'm gonna make some delicious acorn food. So if you're thinking out there that it's too much work and it's not worth it, it can only be because you have never tried my acorn pancakes and uh, taco chips and crackers and all the good stuff that, I, that you can make out of it. So I'm gonna show you briefly in the next episode how I'm cooking with this amazing ingredient. So hope to see you next time and uh, thanks for watching. So this was kind of a little introduction to the channel. I really hope you liked it and enjoyed. If you didn't, stick with me anyway, because the content is gonna get better and better as we go. Remember to subscribe. Next time, we're gonna go out in the winter landscape and explore some movement on the slippery surface of the ice, which I had a lot of fun with. Um, Remember to leave a comment if you got anything to add to this episode. And also feel free to write me on quercustribe at gmail.com if you got similar activities going on in your local landscape that you would like to share here with the community. So uh, thank you so much for watching and see you next time.